how well can you execute your strats or your tactics, how well can you hold the sights, how well can you rotate, renew the smokes, you know, time the smokes perfectly as well. It's up to these kind of different factors. And so, you know, I don't expect both teams to play a very strong CT side. Tunisia had a great, C great CT sides yesterday. Um, I'm, a, I'm expecting them to win this match simply due to their performances, but the Libyans kind of surprised us today and they had a much better game with Devil instead of playing uh, instead of uh, Josh, uh, playing instead of Josh, and Nunu was playing fantastically well as well. So Tunisians will win the knife round and they'll be starting off on the CT side. Well, pre pretty nice spawns there for Atias and Tor to go towards the A site. Petit, we saw uh, yesterday playing the AWP very well indeed, landing a lot of shots, being on point. And it's five utility players for the Tunisians, just like we saw them yesterday on Inferno. Fast B push coming in from the armored terrorists, very 1.6 style Glock train. And there's only one CT, he's back in f really, really fast. Uh, puts down the smoke, which actually slows down the T's and forces them backward. They're not going to push forward through the smoke because they don't have flashes to flash themselves through and they were expecting two CTs to be on the receiving end of that when in fact it was just one actually and if they pushed through the smoke he wasn't even peeking the angle so it could have been a risky move but sometimes risks do pay off they're getting back towards the B site there's a smoke on edge but he's all the way in the A site don't know if he's going to renew it from there so Atiaz is just going to throw down a flash towards down to 5 health. Here's the B execute. Atiaz trying to land shots, not finding anybody. He's going to back away as well. Frost is going to try and hunt him down with the Glock. He'll take him out. And the Libyans have got a good start here. Frosty with another frag. Frosty looking for more. And he wants to get more entry frags here. CT's now playing on the retake. Devil take, taking down Edge with the Glock. And the Glock armor has been very, very ferocious this round. And the Libyans will pick up yet another pistol round. Shiva trying to knock down some Eds. Only able to make one casualty on the Libyan roaster. On a roster. Not roaster. There's no, nothing being roasted here. Yeah. 100% correct there. Good pistol round by the Libyans. Nice and confident. And uh, now we see a full eco from the Tunisians. And that's, that's due to the fact that this is a qu quite a utility heavy map. And they're deciding... What we'll do is, we'll eco two and have a fourth round with full utility. That's the best choice. Rather than having a force buy with no utility and a fourth round with not good utility, it's better to play like that. Yep. 100% right there, Bob. And the Libyans are here to cash in with three SMGs, uh, Mac 10 and two MP7s. That he has on his own. It's a four man stack at the B site. If the Libyans have watched their games yesterday, they'll know that they do that. They do like the stack on the pistol round. Petit getting impatient, trying to peek and actually taking down Frosty. There's a return there from Crocodile. Crocodile has to make sure that they don't pick up that weapon. Nunes pushing up Arch. And the bomb's going to be moving towards the A site. Atiaz on relatively low health. Should be finished off soon here by Nunu. Who's marauding here in the A site, looking for him. Finds him. And I'll take him out with the P90. Crocodile still pushing forward here on the B side. Big mistake there by Crocodile. Actually, no. He's got support from Devil. Having that support from the Devil makes it, you know, it makes sense to push the B side. But if he was going on his own against, you know, maybe another player, maybe two, it's just, uh, it's just a shame because he'd give away a gun. They probably might be able to save it, might play for the retake. You never know. It's really, really risky play on an anti-eco to be charging around like that on your own. Either way, Libya will pick up the second. This is a good start here on the harder side of Inferno against the Tunisians. Tunisians playing with the same lineup we saw yesterday. Tunisia beat Algeria and Morocco. Compl like, just completely destroyed them. So if the Libyans, I mean, this would be amazing. Like, if the Libyans win beat the Tunisians and had a better game against the Algerians, it would have completely changed the group standings. It would have transformed it and would have made it a lot more open for absolutely everybody. But we'll see, we'll see what will happen. It was the same case against the Algerians. They came back into it and uh, ended up with a draw. So. It's all renewing that smoke. Tunisians already out of smokes at the B site. Petit can throw the smoke from the A site, but he's too busy focusing on apartments, and he might need it in this position. And the Libyans are rotating, perhaps 
towards the B site right now. There are two CTs ready and waiting for them. Atiaz and Tor with two Famases. It's the third round by here from Tunisia. They've not waited for another round. You don't see a lot of this Famas utility on the third round. Actually, it's very, very rare. I think this is the first time I've seen it on, on go. Third, third round full by. First time. I don't know if the Libyans are going to be expecting this. They've already lost Devil here. They're moving towards the B site. Atti is in a good position with the Famas. Gets a spray down. Takes down Nunu. There's a return from Crocodile. And there's another frag there. As Tor Actually, that was Tor taking down Nunu. Tor gets another frag. Edge coming into support. Crocodile's on his own. And there you have it. Tunisia with a third round win. Just using Famas's. And they'll be able to pick up an AK-47 for Edge as well. As the terrorists don't have a lot of money. They didn't get the bomb planted. But they're able to go for a full buy if they want to. And with two AK 47s and three Lils. But, whoa, Eco with this much money? I mean, at least force it up. Not going to go for an Eco. And only Crocodile buying armor. Nunu could, bu could buy armor. He buys a smoke and nade. He could definitely buy armor, at least so that his money became becomes the same as the money of, of, his, of his other teammates. And then next round, they're going to go for a full buy together anyway. So, Nunu maybe not buying the armor because he wants to buy an AWP. That's also a, a very logical decision. But uh, good shout there by the Tunisians. And they'll take a round for their hard work as well. Oh, I love this. I love when Autodirect does that. Just focuses on some dead body. Really interesting, man. Sadly, though, the force buy from the Libyans doing absolutely nothing. Not phasing the Tunisians whatsoever, and they'll pick up a second round. Libya has to be careful about falling in the horrible trap, losing all the momentum and allowing Tunisia to just pick up round after round after round on the CT side. It's very possible. Once the CTs get into the groove of things on this map, it can make your life hell. Petit again, very aggressive AWPer, very talented as well. Always going for the picks at mid. Always going for that map control at apartments. And always keeping his opponents on their tippy toes. Frosty searching for the entry over at the B site. There's an aid coming in from Atiaz. They're saving the smoke. It's a good shout here from the Tunisians. Don't want to waste the smoke early on. And with a minute 13 seconds, the Libyans should try to at least lure them into using their utility before they make their execute. And that's kind of the idea as well from the default, is that you put on pressure, you throw down a few flashes and nades, make the CTs use up the utility, and then you can go for an execute later on in the round. But that's not happening at the moment. Smoke comes down over on the B site. Frosty's there. And the terrorists are split up all over. Edge up on the balcony. We'll make a frag on Edge. Devil uh, will make a frag on Devil. Sorry, Devil just looks up, knows exactly where he is, and he's going to back away and change position. There's the final smoke on the B site. They're deciding to go towards the A site now, knowing that they'll have to wait another 17 seconds before they can do anything. And with three players remaining, it'll be a difficult, difficult fight indeed. Petit holding a very narrow angle, and he'll be able to land a shot on Meredith as well. Two players now wait remaining for the Libyans as a flash comes over from Shiva, and they'll be moving towards the arch side. And the truck side at the same time. Petit with another frag, and it looks far too easy here for the Tunisians as they make it 3 to 2. The Libyans need more confidence. They need to be a bit faster with their entries. And they can't really just play the slow one by one CS, you know, just moving into the site one by one. It's getting shot down by the Tunisians like that. It's not going to work out. Use the utility, try and flash your opponents, play a bit of pre fire, Molotov your opponents. Uh, Tunisia will pick up that round, and actually Libya will be on an eco. And I don't know what happened there, but Frosty, I think he probably did auto-assign and joined the CT side. I don't know how that works, because Atiaz was on as well. But And Petit picking up the op this early on has given a lot of firepower to the Tunisian side. He's been a very positive driving force. And has made some important frags in their last couple of matches. We have the restart coming up. Full eco now by the Libyans. A couple of pistols on the players. Look at this. On the side of the Tunisians, they've got everything they need. Just a FAMAS instead of an M4 on tour. But the utility is fantastic. 
Double knee down. Gonna be a banana push from Terrorist. Petit misses his shot. Very uncharacteristic here by Petit. He's gonna be rushed. He'll go down. There's Yon picked up by Nunu, who had an ace before. And there's a pop flash. Tor checks. Nobody's out there. Renews the smoke. But the terrorists are happy with the op they just picked up. Nunu should just should be thinking about giving away his tech nine to one of his teammates who can uh, use that pistol and just focus on using that op. Meredith. Slowly creeping up. Nobody checking Arch. Doesn't land the headshot on Shiva though, and Atiyaz is going to pop out. It's a big mistake by Atiyaz not to be checking short. Wow, Frosty takes down Atiyaz. Shiva gets the return though. Shiva making sure they don't get control of the A site. And if they do, that they pay very dearly for it. Nunu trying to hold the flank here while his teammate pushes forward. Crocodile. Still got two health. And it's a two versus two with 30 seconds left on the clock. I think they're moving towards the B site now. Is actually a very, very good call if they decide to do that. Because Edge is all the way up in Banana. And you also have Shiva in pit. Just checking truck side. But no, they're moving towards the A site again. Nuno goes down, and Crocodile with two health. It's not going to be very doubtful that he'll win this round. He'll get the bomb plant, however. Even that, no. Wall bank. By Shiva to take him out. And uh, Tunisia will pick up the fourth round. Would have been a good idea to go to the B site. I think they tried to fake it, or maybe they disagree disagreed on, on that plan, because one of them said, let's go B. They started going, and then didn't happen. Either way... The decision to go back to the A site cost them the round because the pit position is so hard to deal with, especially in a 1v2 when you don't have a lot of health and you don't have armor and no utility. It's very, very difficult to deal with a CT or even terrorist for that matter who's hiding in that position. But there's plenty of rounds left here in this game. It's very, very early days. We can see a definite change of pace sooner or later. But this map should definitely favor the Tunisians who seem to have a tad bit more experience and teamwork playing yesterday's matches. Well, sometimes you do see some nice entry frag power from the Libyans. It's just the consistency is not there. Atia's going to renew the smoke. Frosty unable to land the shots. And sometimes the ping has something to do with it. Tor is there, fires away, gets a frag through the smoke. Takes down Frosty. Still alive. His teammate behind the smoke is going to try and rotate from ruins. But there's a spindle smoke. Tor is still alive. Picks up another frag. And that's too many frags. One too many for Tor. Atia's on top of spindle. Drops the bomb. It goes flying up in the air. And he's still alive. Drops down. Meredith, though, picks up an entry by pushing through the smoke. Taking down Edge, who is rotating. I don't think he really expected to be attacked from that position and now it's the two versus three very good play there from Mary the checking banana has to turn around might be coming from, coming in from CT Petit takes down Nalino who's pushing ruins and it's all up to Meredith in a 1v3 he'll be shot down by Shiva he already did a huge job getting three frags sorry it was a one versus two but it just wasn't enough as Tunisia will make it five to two and do have a pause right now but Nunu and, and Meredith's ping is just far too high to play properly and to play, consist to play consistently and to get consistent frags either way both players on the top of the leaderboard right now five frags for Nunu three to Meredith and with the money that they have they can go for another full buy Bob what have you got to say uh, it's about time you give me a, a chance to have a talk I've been trying to give a couple of tips and a couple of thoughts in, but you've been interrupting me every time. Either way, seems like Tunisia have warmed up after losing the E cut. And they're looking solid on the CT side. Even with the retakes, just like we saw at B site. Uh, what the Libyans have to do, have to try and get the sites. At the same time, getting the trades immediately. If they lose a the player, make sure the CTs lose a player. Rather than losing two for one. And uh, being in a bad position during the after plant situation. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Eco now by the terrorists. Three tech nines. And a lot of you guys are asking about Khaled. He, 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 he was with us, but he, he just disappeared. He hasn't spoken. He's a bit shy at the moment. I don't know if he's going to come. Well, look at that smoke. You can actually see at the corner. What's that? What's Bob's full name? Hi, Bob. What, what's your full name, mate? 
I don't like to disclose that kind of information on the internets. On the what? Interwebs. You mean the internet? Yeah, yeah, whatever, mate. Just call me Bob. You got a Twitter, Bob? No, mate. Don't do these Twitter things. Just watch CSGO, commentate on CSGO. And that's it. That's all I do, the interwebs. Tunisia with an easy anti-eco here. Nothing much from the Libyans as they're taken down one by one. They've lost Shiva. But other than that, no casualties for Tunis. Six to two. And they're really picking up the pace now, Tunisians. Six rounds in a row, actually, against the Libyans. They picked up the first two. And we've had some close ones, and now we do have a proper, proper buy. Double up setup on Inferno T side. What? You don't really see a lot of that. You don't even see AWPs usually on the T side of Inferno. It's a really difficult map to play T side AWP. But it is a mix. And Petit will start it off with a frag on Devil. Meredith pushing up the stairs at Apartments. to try and get control of that and he'll be given control of it. And a nade will take him down to 79 health. Frosty looking for an entry here. Crocodile holding mid. Nunu holding banana. But this kind of situation here with Nunu and... Uh, oh, he's just throwing flashes and, and nades. That's what I said. I was thinking, like, if Nunu is peeking, there's no point because Frosty's in this position. He can see them before Nunu comes up. And he won't be able to make the trade anyway. So there's a smoke renewed. And he's just checking Spindle to make sure that nobody knows that someone's at CT. But where's the second CT? There's always a second CT. Petit consistently picking up frags at the beginning of rounds. Takes down Crocodile as well. They're trying to kind of push both sides at the same time but it's not really working out for them and Frosty's deciding to back away here as he's unable to get an entry on the B site. Meredith though takes down Petit finally there's a the Molotov I think he got him with his pants down but Shiva's gonna get Frosty. Matthias renewing his smoke three smokes so we saw an early smoke from the A site by the CTs and with two players remaining with the AWP Eight seconds left on the clock. They're deciding to save it. So very, very slow by the uh, Libyans. It's not working out. This slow-style terrorist side is not going to pick up any rounds against the Tunisians. They just... They're ready. They're waiting. They keep the utility. Tunisians are able to save their smokes and flashes to use them when they need them. But with that save, the T's are able to go for another full buy round with an AWP as well on Nino. Or Nunu, sorry. Nino. Nunu. And now they really need to do something different. Go for a fast apartments push, fast A execute. Do something different. They're pushing in from second mid. Frosty now leading the attack over at apartments. He's going to jump right through that smoke. Meredith pushing arch. And this is a fast push here from the Libyans. They have to find the entry frags though. Meredith looking for somebody. Frosty takes down Sheva over at apartments. Atias knows that somebody's coming from that direction. And Frosty's going to be pushing forward. Will he find him? He's right behind the box. Takes them out. Petit, though, picking up a frag on Nunu all the way from library. They need to try and smoke it off and get the bomb planted. They've got utility left. Petit pushing forward, very aggressive, and he's going to be punished for that. Now it's a two versus one. There's fast push here from the terrorists, making the trades, getting control of the site, and getting the bomb planted as well. Torn out in a 1v2. He's got a Molotov, smoke and flash. Needs to use those utilities if you want to have a chance, want to have a chance in this situation. Crocodile's going to try and get a position in ruins, but he doesn't realize that the CT is ready. Truck side, Frosty there to support his teammate, but he's still alive. Barely, though. Three health on him. Just a gust of wind to finish him off. But Frosty will find a bullet through the wooden pillar. And Libya will pick up their first round here on the T side. Nice play there. Fast A execute. Getting the entry frags and getting control of the site. And they need to play more like that on the T side. Keep it up. Shake it up. Move towards the B side. Go from different positions. Go A to B. Try these different styles of play. Get the trades. It's simple T play. Even if you lose a play, it doesn't matter. Don't, fear, don't, don't be scared about losing one or two players as long as you get the return frag almost immediately. And what they need to do is they need to try and break the Tunisian economy so they can get a couple of free rounds. If they come out of the first half with five rounds, they'll be very, very happy indeed. Petit now flashing himself for mid, but nobody's there to receive the bullet. Tor starts it off, though. Takes one frag. There's a return from Frosty. Now they need to take Tor. He's two, three kills here for Tor. He's done an excellent job to hold the B-side. Petit coming up from behind. Leg shots Nino. Oh, and Nino takes him out with the AWP. Tor is still alive, though. Meredith is going to try and push through the smoke. He'll be shot down. Tor with four frags. Tor's an absolute beast. And if there's a king of banana or a king of the B site in Africa, it must be Tor. That's the second time he's done that. The second time he's won around for Tunisia. And that fast B push is not working for the Libyans. They're unable to deal with Tor. 
and he's had a fantastic game so far. 12, nope, that's Shiva actually. Tor with nine frags and five deaths. And maybe better placed flashes or better placed nades perhaps would give him a better chance against the uh, Tunisian CT player. Uh, either way, that completely breaks the Libyan economy and we will see a full eco from them. Pretty aggressive and apartments. Dynamic CT player. Sometimes not as consistent as you'd like him to be. But in those moments where he does do something that the opponents doesn't, don't expect, or the, that the opponent doesn't expect, he is able to get very important entry frags and tip the balance towards the, his team's favor. We have three more rounds left in the half. And Libya will go for a full buy now. Two Galils, one on Devil and the other on Nunu. And this time around, they're going to do the same thing they did in the round that they won before, which is go for second mid, get control of that, try and push towards apartments, and hope that Frosty can get the entry frags in apartments, and that they can take down the people over at truck side as well. Atias gets a frag, sees a lot of terrorists coming towards the A side. They know they're coming in. Edge is going to push forward. Good smokes here by the T's, but Edge is actually going to take advantage of them. Tor is there to cut off this push from Arch. And there are two CTs. Nice nade by Edge. And it's up to Frosty and Devil. Devil who's in the library right now. Not a lot of health. Frosty. Looking for the person at Pits. Devil gets the entry on Petit. Shiva doesn't find Devil. He's avoiding death here at the moment. But his teammate's going to go down at Pit. And that's the bomb down as well. And the two remaining CTs. They've got plenty of health on tour. And a lot of utility as well. I don't know if Edge is 100% aware where he's coming from. Devil is actually going towards apartments. Tor is going to Molosov truck side anyway. And he's going to push forward. It's very difficult. Good crossfire set up here by the Tunisians. Tor just checking to make sure that he doesn't come from arch side. There's a smoke there anyway. And with that crossfire, Tunisia will win that round. So really nicely done there by the Tunisians. The Libyan attack. Trying to go for that fast fast push. Frosty was a bit too late. Didn't get any entries. And uh, Atiaz was able to stay alive. Pick up frags and back away as well. Edge there at quad. Using the little space between the smoke on the wall and the left side. To pick up a frag as well. And a very fast rotation from the CTs. And knowing that your opponents do a really fast rotation. You can take advantage of that by having one player... Just holding the flank in a in a in a dodgy position or in a nasty position at mid. There's a couple of positions where you can stop the flank from the CTs and get a couple of kills. But as it is, Libya now on an eco for the second to last round this half. Saving up for the final round. It's a good play here from the Tunisians. It was a nice start by the Libyans, but they just did not have it in them to pick up more T rounds than they have so far. And uh, it's just been better T pl better CT play here from the Tunisians on this map. They've known how to use the utilities. They've known how to set up crossfires. And they've known when to peek and when not to peek as well. Well, at the same time, the Libyans have not had the chance to really overcome their opponents in their one versus one duels. Nice play there by Nunu to get that sh deagle shot on Petit. Again, Petit. Gets the frags, plays nice and aggressive, but is punished for it by the CPs. And Nunu's going to get a second frag with the Desert Eagle, but that's it. No more from Nunu. 11-3. to three. That's the final round of the first half. Libya need this. They really, really do. And they'll be able to afford quite a wider range of weaponry with the money that they've saved so far. Crocodile playing with the AWP. And we have a healthy amount of utility as well. Early mid-smoke here by the Libyans, even though they've got a person peeking. And the Devil is going to push forward for Banana Control. has got support from his teammates at the edge. Banana is going to get the entry and Petit. This is really nicely done there by the Libyans. Good start here for the final round of the half. 
Edge. Pop flashes them. Actually, no, it was a Molotov there by Edge that forced them back. And Cockrell's got a good position. Sometimes Tunisia's aggression has allowed or has given Libya a lot more room and uh, a better chance at picking up more rounds. But you do have to be aggressive t at times. You can't always play passive. You can't let, can't give the terrorists room every single time. Even if it might cost you a round or two. It's a worthy risk and it's an acceptable risk as well. Frosty backs away, pops back, but Atias is going to get the better of him. His aim could have been slightly better. I don't think he knew that Atias was going to be right in the middle of Arch like that. And Atias is going to go back to truck. And they're assuming it's going to be an A push, but one player remaining on the B site. They have to go for a push here. CT smokes down. They try to smoke Spindle, but it's a failed smoke. And Edge is going to take down Devil here. Another frag for the terrorists as they take down Edge by the hand of Nunalino. Molotov to stop the rotation. Nunu looking for the bomb. Picks it up. Gets, gets it planted. Two versus three. Crocodile has to defend his back here. It's a wall bank from Tor. And he gets the entry on Nunu as well onto the B site. Crocodile on his own to be finished off by Shiva. And the bomb's going to be defused as well. So Tunisia will pick up the final round and make it 12 to 3. Nice try there by the Libyans, but again, unable to make the trade immediately as they go in towards the B site. And at the same time, post plant positions, not good enough. So the CTs were too fast on the rotate, and they knew it was coming well before it happened. So only three rounds for the terrorists to play with, or the Libyans to play with, as they start on the CT now. Look at this, Shiva with 16 kills and 6 deaths. Petit, 14 to 10. Good performance here so far. On the other hand, if you look at the Libyans, Frosty and Nunu doing good, but Meredith and Crocodile with a lot to improve. But it's been difficult. It's been very, very difficult. And you can always say the ping has something to do with it. Although Crocodile with the lowest ping is performing the worst at the moment. It seems like Tunisia are going to put themselves on nine points. So very, very nicely done. They've done the hard work. They've they've played the games. They've picked up the wins. South Africa potentially can go through, potentially can be the strongest team in the African qualifiers, but we haven't seen any of them yet. We don't know. We don't know how South Africa is going to be like. And they've got, they have to play these teams that have already got a bit of experience under their belt. They have to play a Libya that got a draw against Algeria, that has played a couple of games, that have been practicing a bit more. They have to play against uh, uh, an Algeria and Morocco that have played a couple of games. And at the end of the day, they have to play against Tunisia and Egypt who have a lot of confidence from winning all their matches so far. So South Africa have a bit of a more difficult situation. At the same time, they can watch the matches, they can see the way that they play on these maps, and they can come with a new way, new style that the uh, other opponents won't expect. So they do have that advantage, if any. And it is a strong advantage. Especially if they really sit down and study their opponents and watch these matches and see how Tunisia play, how Egypt play on various maps. To know which maps are strong, which maps are weak. To try and use the veto process to perhaps play them on the maps they're not very strong at. I think a team like South Africa should probably not play Dust 2 as we've seen these African teams. It seems to be the, more, the map that gives them the most confident, confidence that's allowed them to get the most rounds and that has given us quite close games between them. Frosty on his own. Ooh, sees two terrorists. He's going to back away. And he's going to give information that two T's without. No flank from him. Crocodile should be ready for this. This is the headshot. Takes down Edge. Shiva takes down Frosty as he pushes forward from mid. Devil with one frag on top, but Shiva with a second and the bomb's going to be planted. It's a really good position for Frosty. He didn't take advantage of it. Nunu goes down on the B site. Bomb's planted. Meredith on his own with a defuse kit. Not a, lot of, not a lot of health on Shiva and Atias. And it's definitely possible for Meredith. Shoulder peeking here by Atias just to make sure that he's not defusing. And he's going to be pushed by two terrorists at the same time. Very difficult position for Meredith. Tunisia will pick up that round. By picking up the pistol round, they've pretty much cancelled any chance of Libya coming back into this game. It'll be a huge uphill struggle. They would need to win 9, 10 rounds, sorry, 10, 11 rounds in a row. And it doesn't seem so likely that we're going to see that from the Libyans. 
as we've judging by their past matches they don't have the strongest of CT sides again it's a learning experience for these players and it's uh, it's an opportunity f perhaps as well to bring more light to the scene a lot of you guys are watching the African teams. Uh, they've never had this many viewers. They've never had a local tournament like this. It's online, but it's local. It's just African teams playing against each other. And at the same time, they've not had the ability to go to a LAN final to play for 100,000. So it's really a huge jump for these teams who don't have small leagues. And I think it's about time that leagues were organized for them. And I think the... Uh, African continent. It's got a bit of history with 1.6, but at the same time, the CSGO has been very, very, very quiet. Good force by round here by the Libyans. Tor is on his own in a 1v4. Got the bomb, though. And at the same time, Crocodile and Devil have picked up a weapon each. I think Crocodile should be giving his weapon to Meredith and Nunu, but they're all on the other part of the map. And Tor is trying to bank his money on the B site. There's Nunu and Meredith waiting for him with a 5-7. Both of them can peek him at the same time. If he decides to get into the site, he's silent walking. He's going to be running now. And he's given away his position. He had to run. He had to get the bomb planted as soon as possible. And Libya will pick up the force by round. It's a good, good comeback for the Libyans. And they might be able to pick up a couple of rounds after this. But I think the inevitable will be a Tunisian win this map. I think, I think, you know what, I like what I'm seeing. I, I, th I think they should have at least, you know, a North African league. We should at least see that. North African teams just playing in one league together. Because they can have, they have similar, they can, they can play in, in European um, pings. Or European servers, what am I saying? They can play on European servers and have similar pings, so... It's possible. I think it'll be difficult having a tournament that includes both North African and South African teams just due to the fact that there's a huge ping difference, that they've got a problem with the networking, as we will see now with South Africa. Now, I don't, I don't know how the uh, organizers have kind of done it, um, but I think they found like a mediatory server that both teams have similar ping on, even though it's not good ping, but I guess that's just going to have to go. That's just going to have to do, sorry. I don't know why we've got the match pause at the moment. So they just went for a quick, maybe tactical pause and maybe one of the players is having ping problems. But we're back in. It's a false buy from the Tunisians here. And if they do win this round, they break the Libyan economy completely because they're on relatively low money. And at the same time, they'll only be getting 1.4k if they lose this round. No loser bonus for them. Those running sounds. Interesting. Knowing that your opponents are on a force by, they're going for an aggressive apartments approach. Reducing the distance between them and their opponents. And we have a quad smoke as they push towards arch side. It's a good bit of movement from Devil to back away, but he's not landing his shots. Tunisia get the entry, and now they're moving towards the A site with no one to stop them except for Frosty. Who gets one frag, backs away for the reload, and Ati has hunts him down. Three versus four retake now coming in from the CTs. Excellent round here by the Tunisians. And it's the kind of stuff we should have seen from the Libyans when they were on the T side. Very good smoke, good confident movement. Five players using that Tech 9 movement accuracy. And now the Libyans on to the retake. Lands a headshot on Shiva, doesn't finish him off though. Drops down. Gets shot down by Atias. Nunu with the entry on edge coming in from truck. Another frag here for the young Libyan. It's two versus two. Meredith on his own. And Torin is going to pick up the last final frags. 14 to 4. And it's the final nail on the coffin here. As the Tunisians are only two rounds away from securing another three points. And staying on the top of the table. And putting more pressure on the Egyptians as well. Who are playing after this. Egypt versus Algeria. That will start, I think, 4.30 because of 
the fact that this match has uh, started late as well. Egypt versus Algeria. Our channel. No, it's just Ebrahim TV. Oh, the jumping P90 shot on Merida. Bomb's going to be planted here by Atias. Nunu tries to use the sound to localize the location of the bomb plant. And to fire through the smoke. Atias just pushing forward with the P90. No fear here. Wipes out the Tech 9. He's got the M4 that he picked up as well. Finish off Devil. And with a 2v4 retake, it's very, very, very difficult for the remaining Libyans to take the site now. Crocodile has a good start. Gets a frag on Atias. Torres in the middle of nowhere. Petit goes down to Frosty. And it's just Eds on his own. He'll go down. Frosty with a triple coming in from Ruins. But he won't have time for the defuse. Libya will lose this round. Frosty is just going to stay in the middle of it. Knowing that they've lost the game. He won't even try to save that, that for Mass. And both players will actually lose their rifles. So 15 to 4. Libya losing that round. No money for them. Because they just forced by. But it's a good retake there from Frosty. These things weren't in good positions after the plant. And maybe that's just a bit of uh, a, a drop of focus in the Twansa. I think Khaled's come. Shall we let, shall we, shall we let Khaled do a bit of, bit of casting? No, I'm, I'm, bit, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, yo. It's, where's Khaled from? Is he Libyan? Is Khaled Libyan? Alright, Khaled's Libyan then. Better off with a name like Masoud if he's Libyan, mate. Abdullah. Fair Abdullah. Alright. I think a lot of people are going to be afraid if I suddenly start cacking on in a, in a completely different foreign language. Oh, Meredith, nicely done. Good usage of that sandbag area. Three frags for him. And that's good night, Tunisia, this round. Edge on his own. Looking for the entries. Nunes is going to finish him off. Libya with another round. 15 to 5. And that's a very, very good force buy. Or not force buy, but they had to buy anything they could. It's a very good pistol armor buy. Bearing in mind the Tunisians are, were able to afford full buy, so they won two pistol armor rounds against a full buy Tunisian side. So it's a shame that they lost the pistol round because had they not lost the pistol round, it might have been a very, very different story in Balamori. Don't know if you guys have watched that shot. Well, running through the smoke, no fear from the Tunisians. Good flash there by Devil. They're right in front of him. Picks up two, but Petit takes him out with the help of Atiaz. And Frosty's jumping towards them to take out the remaining three terrorists. Finds Shiva, finds Petit. And Edge is going to go down as well. And to Crocodiles for Mass, though. And as he takes down Frosty, another run for Libya. 15 to 6. Tunisia. Do you have money to play with now? Can go for a false bite. Or even three Galils and an AK. And two AKs, sorry. But they're going to go for a full eco. And uh, make sure that they can buy everything that they need. The next round, Edge going for armor and a couple of nades. Uh, the Libyans have done a good job so far to pick up the last three rounds. Frosty looking for the early entry on mid. Sees a couple of people as well. That gives him a lot of information. There's a boiler smoke. Forces him back. Gives away quad. Needs to rotate. There's one person at arch. Devil's there. Finds Atiaz. And probably shall end him with the nade as well. Death from above there by Devil. The rest of the terrorists are moving towards the B site. How many people want to hear Khalid? I want to see from the chat. How many people want to hear Khalid? Yeah, just say hashtag Khalid. Nearly behind the car. Only one frag before being taken down by Petit. It's a B site execute here from the terrorists. But the CT smoke isn't perfect. Allows Meredith to see them as they cross a go across and perhaps to figure out their positions. Petit using the M4 that he picked up from Nunu and Nunu's position behind car on his own, no support, no utility on an anti-eco is also again another big risk, another big mistake that you shouldn't be making. 
Meredith coming in from Ruins. Oh, shot down by Edge. I, I just can't believe... You know, Khalid can't believe what he just saw there. Tunisia on a full eco just pick up the final round and make it 16-6. to six.